Hey friends, welcome to today's video. Today we are doing makeup, chatting, kind of sharing some personal things, um, and doing mostly all products that you can pick up at Sephora. This is kind of my first video for the Sephora Spring Savings event. Um, you know, I'm gonna list all of my like past previous videos I've done over the years for favorite products from Sephora. I find it really hard every year to like try and do a top 20 or top 10 must haves from Sephora because, I mean, let's be real, like there are so many favorite products at Sephora. So today's video is kind of like my current favorites, products that I'm currently using that are in my rotation that I've been using recently. Um, so yeah, that's what we're gonna do. If you are new to my channel, my name is Lisa. I'm a former makeup artist and I was a MAC trainer years and years ago, but I say that because I love teaching makeup. If there's one thing you get from my channel, it is you get easy and explained makeup tips that are actually like attainable, that you can actually apply, that don't take a whole lot of time and that don't require a ton of products. So if you're into that type of video or those types of videos, please subscribe to my channel. All right, you guys, let's get started. Um, okay, let's get started. I have my skincare on and then I have a tinted moisturizer on and I'm kind of kicking myself because I actually wanted to apply the NARS tinted moisturizer for this video because this is available at Sephora and I'm currently loving this product. But this morning I applied my Elastin Mineral Sunscreen Screen that has a tint to it, just kind of as part of my skincare routine. So I don't want to necessarily layer this on top of it, but this needs to be mentioned in this video because it is so good and it works really well with the Dior uh, face and body foundation, which I will be applying. So let's get started with that. And I'm going to be kind of chatty in this video because I got some things I want to share and talk about and kind of I don't, I shouldn't say get off my chest, but you know, I feel like my videos um, are very makeup focused and I try and be kind of concise. And sometimes I feel like, you know, I wanna be a little more personal with you guys and share a little bit more. And today is one of those days. Um, okay, so I have this shade, what shade do I have? One in, and this is how much I put on my hand, but I can tell you right now, I'm likely not going to use all of this. And I'm using the BK Beauty 101 brush to apply it. Where do I begin? <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna try and just, you know, I'm just gonna try and speak candidly about this. I try to keep things pretty lighthearted and positive on my YouTube channel and on Instagram, but you know, that's obviously, my life is not always perfect and my days are not always rainbows and sunshines and butterflies. You know, I deal with stuff that brings me down and negativity as well. I just don't choose to really share a lot of that online, but that doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Um, but today I dealt with some of that and it was a, a learning lesson for me. Um, so let me rewind and just tell you what happened. So um, I got an email this morning and it was a pretty mean, hateful, nasty email. It was really personal and it was just mean. <laughs> it was straight up mean. This woman was mad as a hornet and she did not like me. And, um, you know, when I first read it, I was just like, ugh. I was just like, you know, upset. I was angry. I wanted to react, you know, because no one likes to be attacked like that out of nowhere. It was literally like 7 a.m. And um, I wanted to react. I was just like, ah, you know, and, uh, I always, I, I don't though, I know that that's the better response is just not to react to that. But I think it's important to always have people in your corner, friends that you can, you know, kind of vent to when you get like in that state, whether it's a mean person online or someone is trying to fight with you on Facebook or whatever, you know, I don't think it's just social media influencers that deal with that. I think we all like have some, have experienced that, right? And I think it's important to have friends that you can um, reach out to and just kind of get it off your chest. But you know that those friends are going to like offer like sound rational advice, right? And they're not just going to kind of pour fuel on the fire to get more of a reaction out of you, right? So I'm very fortunate that I have a couple of those friends. And, uh, you know, I just sent them a text. I was like, oh, I need a pep talk. <laughs> like, I need you to just, you know, help me take a few deep breaths and remind myself that this just doesn't even deserve my attention. Cause I know that, right? I know that, I know that, but sometimes you get them and they're just so ugly that it's like hard to, it's just hard to shut it off. You know, sometimes I'm really good at just being like delete, forget about it. Like it evaporates from my mind. And then sometimes it takes me a little more time to do that. And this, this morning it took me a little more time to do that. So I reached out to my friends. They of course, you know, told me what I needed to hear, which was the truth, you know, that this person doesn't even know me. <laughs> And it's, you know, the comments and the attacks she was making were very, very personal. Like, 
you can't say that about someone you've never met in your life, you know, you don't know me. <laughs> and, you know, and just a reminder that that person is like reflecting, right? Because they're probably dealing with a lot of, it's very likely that they're not, you know, happy with their own situation or their own life or their own day is bad or something. You know, it's all a projection. When people attack like that, especially on strangers, it's um, almost always a projection of their own with their dealing with themselves. And um, anyhow, about 30 minutes passed. And then I received the sweetest email. And I hope I say your name right. And I hope that you're watching because you have no idea how much your email touched me. It's Maliva, Maleva. I know, I know you know who you are. <laughs> I have to tell you, your email came in like within minutes of reading the first one. And it just, uh, it's like, I just screenshotted it and I'm keeping it in my phone because it's a great reminder that that's where my energy should go. And that, and I'm, and I'm saying my, but that's, I'm saying this is like, I'm having this conversation because I feel like, you know, I think that this hopefully can help you guys if you are ever in this situation, like your energy should go to the positive. And it was just a great reminder that 99.9% .9 of my community is that, right? And there's just that one little like fraction that um, I get, and I don't get it very often, thankfully, but um, that are not that. And why does that deserve my attention? It doesn't, you know? And so I replied to your email and I, you know, told you how, um, this all happened like an hour ago, two hours ago. Um, you know, I just told you how much, like how your email I read at just the right time and I needed it. And then her and I exchanged a couple emails and she shared with me, um, a bit about herself, more personal kind of stuff about herself. And I was so inspired by her because she has, not had an easy, she's come across a lot of hardships and her, her attitude was just so positive and loving. And, you know, for her to send me the email that she sent me before sweet, loving email out of nowhere, you know, like she didn't have to take the time to do that. It was just her spreading kindness and love and putting it out there in the world. And she had no idea how much it impacted me. So I just want to tell you, if you're watching that, I seriously love you. <laughs> like you are so inspiring and you just, you made my day and I'm going to save your email and I'm going to reference it when I need it the next time I come across a comment or a message like I did this morning. And I just wanted to share that because I think, you know, we don't really have any idea how the small acts of kindness impact people in their day. And we also don't know what people are going through. You know, we don't know what people are going through. And so, um, yeah, I just wanted to share that. I wanted to share that. Okay. <laughs> Let's have a little drink of tea, compose myself. Um, okay, so now that I have my foundation applied, this foundation is so good. I mean, I know I look kind of crazy because I'm all canceled out. <laughs> Everything's like covered and I look a little bit like eyes behind a mask. Um, I say that, but it actually looks really natural. It gives really good coverage without looking heavy and I love it. And I haven't even set it with powder. I'm actually gonna give it some time to set before I set it with powder. I'm gonna go and apply my brows and I'm using the Kevin Aquan brow pencil. This brow pencil is so good. It's probably the best that I have ever used and that is saying a lot because I, you know, love my NYX Precision Brow Pencil. This one's definitely a lot finer of a tip. Um, I don't know actually if this is available at Sephora. I'm sorry, you guys. I just kind of, I don't really switch my brow products up. You know, I use the same brow product until I discover a new one I like as much. And this one's so good. But the brow gel I'm using is available. Okay, perfect. Now I'm gonna go in with my brow gel and this is the Gimme Brow from Benefit. I've been using this product a very, very long time. It is one of the best brow gels in my opinion. Um, I love the formula. It has a little bit of um, like fibers in it so it gives the brow volume, not just color. And I love the size of the wand. Let's take a, let's just appreciate this. Hold on, can we get you, there we go. Can we just appreciate how small that is? It really allows you to control where you apply it. And I like to use a darker brow pencil and a lighter brow gel. I think the two really balance each other out nicely and give me the perfect color. And you know, my hair has kind of gradually gotten a little blonder. Although I'm thinking about going darker again, not dark, but just adding low lights. I used to do highlights and low lights in my hair. And lately we've just been doing highlights and I feel like maybe I want some low lights back in it. What do you guys think? Okay. Now I'm going to go in and set everything and I'm using the It Cosmetics uh, Bye Bye Pores. One of my favorite loose powders, very lightweight, totally smooths out and blurs the appearance of pores. I think it's one of the best for that purpose. And I'm gonna take my BK Beauty 108 brush and I always pick up a lot. I can't tell you how important it is, you guys. Here we go, focus. I always pick up a lot on the brush, but then I always take the lid and really get most of that off. Try not to tap your ferrule on the lid or any plastic part because that is just gonna damage and dent the ferrule. 
And then I'm gonna just set the center of the face and under the eyes. Next, I'm gonna apply bronzer and I'm gonna go in with the Airbrush Bronzer by Charlotte Tilbury. I am the shade uh, Medium 2. And this bronzer is pretty warm, so on days that you're like really in a rush and you don't wanna put blush on, I think that it works really well as a like bronzer and cheek color. Let's get this hair pulled back. My hair is a little, that's what, today was one of those days where I probably should have washed it, but I didn't have time. I got my morning got away from me. I have started to try and fast. I say try and fast because I'm up to like 13 hours. And part of my, the first thing that I have in the morning that breaks my fast would be my bio coffee and my creamer. You know, I know you can drink black coffee when you're fasting, but I don't like the taste of black coffee. I love my bio coffee. And unfortunately, once I add the creamer and the bio coffee, it's like over 100 calories, so it would break my fast. So I've been holding off um, having that. And it's amazing how like tired I am without doing that part of my routine. This morning I woke up and I was just exhausted. This is today's day two of trying to fast until, you know, I'm basically trying to stop eating dinner by like six o'clock and then eat, you know, my first like meal or calories by 10 a.m. And I haven't made it, <laughs> I haven't made it to 10 a.m. yet. Hey, I feel like if I make it, if I make 13 hours, that's good. I'm gonna listen to my body. If I'm hungry, I'm gonna eat. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna like be starving for three hours just to hit a number. Okay, for primer, I'm using a not available at Sephora primer. I'm sorry. I thought this was. I get Trish McAvoy and Laura Mercier confused, so I think I think oh yeah, Sephora carries Trish McAvoy, but it's not. They carry Laura Mercier. So I'm gonna apply this because it's my favorite eyeshadow primer of the moment, and I'm just gonna use a clean blending brush to sheer this out. And I'm gonna bring it all. All the way up to the brow because the palette I'm using, which I love by the way, does not have a good brow highlight color. So I wanna take my primer up there to kind of brighten and highlight the brow. Okay, so this palette is been my go-to palette for the last, I don't know, month I'd say. And I know I've shared this before, but this was sent to me in PR months ago and I opened it and I didn't like, I wasn't super excited about the color story here. I was like, okay, you know, whatever. And then I started using it and I fell in love with it so much that I lost the one that was sent to me in PR and I went and purchased it again. It is so good. This is the NARS Claudette palette and the formula of these shadows is just like, in my opinion, the best. They're very pigmented, but they also are soft. It's so strange. Like, I know we love a really good, like, pigmented shadow, but I think sometimes it's not always the most friendly on all um, eyes. And this has a good amount of pigment, but it's also super easy to blend, and it's uh, it doesn't go on to be too much, if that makes sense. It's just very silky. That's what I should say. It's a, it's a very pigmented, but very silky um, formula. And I'm gonna go in with this shade right here. It looks kind of warm brown, but it actually goes on more purple on me. And I'm gonna take my BK Beauty 201 brush, and we are just gonna kind of start right here on the outer corner and I'm going to get most of the product off of my brush there and then I'm gonna bring it over. Pretty dark for a transition shade. It's definitely darker than I normally go for. So I wanna make sure that I am depositing most of the color here on the outer corner. And then once it's off the brush, then I work my way over. If I just went straight in and started going back and forth, back and forth, what would happen is I would get too much heavy color and darkness in the center of my lid. And for my eye shape, I don't wanna do that because I don't have have, you know, real big eyes. My eyes are a little smaller and they're more almond shaped. So for me, I'm trying to create the illusion of a more open, rounded, larger eye. And when you put something too dark, too far in, it's just gonna close that off and make it look smaller. Oh, it's so pretty. Look at that. It's just so gorgeous. I think the shades kind of are a little deceiving. They, I mean, not that they look bad in the palette. They certainly don't, but they just go on me a little differently than they look in the palette. Next, I'm gonna go in with my favorite color of all time. It is this shade right here. There we go. Let's get some focus. It looks very, very shimmery, and it definitely does have a lot of shine, but it's not glittery like it looks. It just has this really beautiful, silky, kind of foiled look on the skin, and it also looks more silver to me when I apply it on my skin than it does in the palette. It kind of has this, like, pewter patina type look in the palette, but on the eye, it looks a little bit more, um, a, little, a little more silvery. And I'm gonna use my 203 to pack that onto the eyelid. So I wanna share a conversation that I had with Brooklyn recently. Um, you know, Brooklyn is nine now. So she's at this age where she's very curious and she's asking a lot of questions that are a little more deep than, you know, she was asking a couple years ago about life and about, you know, just I'm having more kind of 
m more mature conversations with her, I should say. And I forget where she saw it or heard of it or something, but I guess she saw or heard something about a psychic. And she asked me, you know, about psychics and if I believed in psychics. And I was like, well, honey, you know, I personally believe that, you know, um, I don't know that I believe that there are people that can like foresee the future specifically, you know, like can tell you exactly what's going to happen or like have visions of that much like specificity. <laughs> Is that a word? But I do believe that there are people that have a very, are very intuitive and, um, you know, do have like very strong intuitions. And, and so, and then I started talking, she asked, she's like, well, what's intuition? And so I started talking to her about, you know, intuition and how it's like this voice inside of you that kind of can help guide you. Right. And it gives you, sometimes you get feelings about things, you know, you get feelings if things are feel good or they feel bad or they're right or they're wrong or about people, you know, and how, um, you know, your, your intuition is that little tiny voice inside your head that can guide you, but sometimes it's hard to listen to it because it's not really based on like factual evidence. Right. And, um, so I was just trying to teach her about the importance of like listening to her intuition and trusting herself, you know, um, and trusting that. And, um, one example that I use, because I think that, you know, it's probably kind of relevant to everybody, um, is like, you know, I said, you, We'll have friendships in your life that make you feel really good and you feel good when you're around them and you feel inspired or you feel, you know, positive things when you're around them. And then there'll be friendships that you have that maybe you don't feel so good. You know, maybe they make you feel um, not good feelings or just something doesn't feel right when you engage with them or you leave them, leave hanging out with them or whatever. And I said, that, that's really important. That's your intuition telling you that maybe this isn't a true friend, you know? Um, <clears throat> and so, you know, I kind of shared some examples of times in my life where I had that intuition about people. And later I realized like my intuition was right, you know? Um, and I thought, man, that's such a good lesson to teach her at this age because it's a lesson that I wish I would have learned, you know, <laughs> very young and, you know, not, as an adult or, you know, just to trust that voice, I guess is my point, just to trust that voice and, and know, trust yourself. And so I'm, I don't know, I'm just enjoying having these conversations with her. You know, I feel like she's really starting to like develop like her own kind of personal identity. And I don't know, I really love it. And I love just encouraging that. And okay, so next I'm taking the darkest shade right here and I'm just adding a little bit more depth in the outer corner here. And that's it. That's all we're going to do up there. I am going to tight line my eyes. And if I, if you pick up one eyeliner from Sephora, this is my favorite for a pencil. It's the Fenty Fly Pencil. And I need to repurchase the black because I'm out of it. This is the darkest brown that they have. And it is the shade, um, what is the shade of this? In Big, in big Truffle. And I'm going to tight line my eyes with this. Normally I would do this with black, but again, I don't have it in black. And the reason I love this pencil is because it's so pigmented and so creamy. So it goes on the waterline really easily. You don't have to like do a whole lot of back and forth or like irritate the eye too much. And I'm actually going to line my eyes with this as well. And I'm not going to be too concerned with getting this line perfect. I just want to get some product mainly on the outer half of my lid. I'm going to go back in with a brush to kind of smudge it. Next I'm going to go in, I'm going to take the 204 brush and I'm going to load up the sides of it with the darkest shade. And I'm going to kind of tap off the excess so I don't have any fallout. And then I'm just going to kind of run this right over that line just to create a soft or smokier look. Okay, so I've become very aware of how I say, okay, perfect a lot in all my videos. And it's so funny because I never, I never really um, realized it. And then someone pointed out to me once a friend who's also a YouTuber, she texts me one day and she's like, you know, don't ever stop saying perfect, or I love the way you say perfect or something. And I was like, what does she mean? What is she talking about? I had no idea. <laughs> and then like maybe a week later, someone else commented and they're like, if you ever have merch, it should say, okay, perfect. And then I realized like, oh, I say that a lot, don't I? So now I actually have been really thinking about getting some type of merch or something that says, okay, perfect. So I think that'd be cute. What do you guys think? I don't know. I don't even know where to start with that, with the merch. Okay, that is pretty. I love that. Okay, next I'm gonna go in and I'm actually gonna take this red shade. I have yet to use this one. It's a real brick orangey red. I actually have not used it. It's the only shade I haven't used in the palette. And I'm gonna take the same brush, load up the sides, and we're gonna run this on my lower lash line. One of the reasons I've been avoiding it is because it's so orangey red, but it's 
it's also going on a little bit deeper, but that also could be because I had used the same brush for that darker shade. I'm just gonna kind of get a real soft diffused liner here. Now, if you feel like it's too red, I know some. I know sometimes we can't work with like really orangey red shades because they can make our eyes look more red or I don't know. It's just not, it's not one of those shades that it's not necessarily flattering on everybody. You can always go in and add one of these shades. I'm gonna add this one right here on top of it to kind of, you know, kind of tone down that red a little bit. Although it's really not too red at all. It actually is really beautiful. Perfect. Okay, next we're gonna go and clean up here. So pretty, I love this look, I love it. Um, so for uh, mascara, I'm gonna use an eyelash curler. This one is by Lily Lashes and I really enjoy it. I have to say, you guys, I know it's been some time since I've had lash extensions. I think I removed them in maybe September of last year. So I've, you know, had them off for quite a while and I am loving my natural lashes. They are healthier and stronger and longer than they have ever been. Um, I do use a lash serum every night. If you wanna pick one up during the Sephora uh, sale, I would recommend the Grande Lash. That's the one I'm currently using. I also use Revita Lash and that one works well, but I like to switch my lash serums up. Um, I find that if I use, you know, the same one too long, I don't feel like my, I get the same results. So I'll use like a tube or two of one and then I'll switch over to another one and then I'll go back and forth. And my favorite are the Revita Lash and Grande Lash. Grande Lash is also, um, I believe less expensive. I wanna say I paid 60 or 70 maybe for it versus the 95 that I paid for the Revita Lash. Okay, and this is the Dior Lash Primer. This is also a really great product to get the most um, drama from your mascara application. And it's also very conditioning. So it's not only gonna give you longer, thicker lashes, but it's actually gonna improve the health of your lashes. And this mascara, my, you guys, is really so good. It's the Man Eater Mascara by Tarte, and I love it. it like lengthens and thickens. And I love the brush because it never gets clumpy and it has tons and tons of tiny little teeth. So it really helps you like coat every lash and kind of pull through to comb through them. I do take my time on my mascara. It's just like, do you see how it just fans out the lashes? It makes them long and thick and really does a great job of fanning them out. Even after I apply layer after layer, it just, they don't get too clumpy. I mean, you can definitely overdo it, but so beautiful. I love this look. It is so gorgeous. Okay, next I'm gonna go in with blush. I feel like you don't hear much about Laura Mercier period on YouTube, but they have some really nice blushes. This is the shade Ginger and it's so beautiful. It's just a nice warm kind of brownie peach shade. It's so pretty. It's not too peach. Um, and I'm gonna use a soft brush to apply it, a big soft fluffy brush. This is the 104. Remember the larger and more fluffy the brush that you use, the softer application you're gonna get. If you use something a little more dense and smaller, it's gonna pack on more color. This blush is so beautiful. It's a matte blush, and I'm literally just gonna kind of place it and pop it on my cheeks. Perfect, ah, oh, love that. Okay, moving right along. So for lip liner, um, I actually am using a liner that's not available at Sephora. This one's available at Ulta. It's by Persona Cosmetics, and it's the shade Dusk. And I need to find my sharpener. All of my pencils are like, this is why I prefer mechanical pencils, because I have lost my sharpener, and all of my pencils kind of look like this at the moment. So let's see what we can get out of this. That's a really pretty shade. It's just a really soft pink shade. And then for uh, lipstick, I'm going in with uh, JK Magic by Charlotte Tilbury. This is part of their Hot Lips collection. I love this formula of lipstick. So the makeup is done now. I am gonna do one last step, which is set it with the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. And I'm just going to do four little sprays. Kind of let that set and keep the foundation and everything locked in place. So pretty. And that wraps it up, you guys. I totally forgot to film an outro on this one, but I will see you guys on my next video. Bye.